I think the biggest obstacle to energy efficiency is simply that ideal energy efficiency saves money without being visible. Uh, policy makers, therefore, don't uh, take seriously the extreme importance of building standards and appliance standards and rebate programs uh, or follow California's lead uh, in decoupling the profits of utilities from the sales of electricity uh, or even rewarding the utilities uh, for saving its customers money. Um, in California, the most profitable department in a utility these days is its uh, energy efficiency department. Well, I think the main problems, uh, the main reasons that efficiency doesn't get the attention it, it deserves and, and, and needs is um, people just don't know about it. And if they do know about it, um, they, they, it isn't part of, you know, what is accepted uh, within various communities. And we tend to be very strongly influenced by the people around us. And that applies also to leaders of countries. Uh, if, and it, you, don't, you can't prove very easily that efficiency, in fact, saved you this much energy without doing a lot of work. So it, it tends to take a while to catch on. Uh, there's also, unfortunately, an ideological component to this uh, and, an, and a sort of profit-related component. Uh, you make a lot of money selling oil, and coal, and natural gas, uranium, you name it. Uh, great profits are to be had there. Energy efficiency doesn't generate that, those, those kinds of profits. Uh, and so the private sector has been slow to really figure out business plans uh, where energy efficiency can make them money. And if you can't do that, then um, you're not going to do very much energy efficiency. And this moves uh, some of this discussion to an ideological plane. Uh, those politicians who want to favor big business and like to see profits are not likely to be enamored of energy efficiency, at least not until they understand uh, that it truly is a potent force that accomplishes many things that I, I would imagine they would uh, favor as well. There are several factors that are prevent or make more difficult the adoption of energy efficiency. Uh, among the, the first one for electric utility is, is it incented to sell more to make more profit or not? And that is a situation that in California has been solved for over two decades with something called decoupling, where the profit of the electric utility does not depend on its sales. And indeed, uh, in the current, uh, the past three years, California utilities have been able to make more money uh, from saving energy than from selling more energy. So that's one policy that uh, is really important to change. Um, other factors that change over time are the transaction cost. Most people don't know what to do. They don't know where to find credible vendors of, of the energy efficiency. Uh, they don't know if what's being installed is going to work. And with time, as you support the emergence of these vendors, of these suppliers of both goods and services, you create a more robust marketplace where it's easier for a customer to find the services they're looking for. You also educate the customer as to what and where they should put their efforts to get the biggest uh, bang for their buck from their energy efficiency investments. So those, I think, are the two biggest ones, the transaction costs, but also having policies that promote and help everybody um, align themselves behind energy efficiency. Utilities and all of the staff that work for utilities have traditionally grown out of an engineering uh, mentality. They're used to building things. They know they're very good at it. They know how to do it. And that's the mentality that they bring to their everyday life. So that's, that's a little bit of a challenge. Um, investing in efficiency is not an engineering challenge. At, at the micro level it is, but from the utilities perspective, it's more about um, a analyzing markets, why they aren't working the way you would like them to, 
figuring out how to influence consumer choices, which requires a, a good understanding of marketing principles and education principles. Those aren't things that utilities have historically been particularly strong at. So that's one part of the answer. And another key part of the answer is that the utilities, it's very much related to the first answer, the utilities very much see selling a product, selling electricity and selling gas as their business. And it's, it's quite a hurdle to get them to look at selling less as something that a business like theirs should be doing. Now, having said all of that, I will note that there are a couple of uh, utility companies that have started to come around to this concept on their own uh, because they see um, I, interesting options to pr propose to their regulators and to policymakers in their jurisdictions to make money on these kind of investments too. And that's what it really comes down to. You need to set up a system, if you want the utilities to be active and supportive players in it, you need to set up a system in which they don't lose money by investing in efficiency. If they lose money in investing in efficiency, they will fight you tooth and nail all the way, even if you've got good policy and good, uh, with regulators and legislators imposing this requirement on them. So if you're an average citizen in a, in, a, in a country that may not have a lot of investment in efficiency initiatives today, what can you do? Well, it probably depends a little bit on your context. It's, it's possible that if you have the ability to, uh, through some sort of advocacy groups, um, have interactions of some sort with your electric or gas utility, it's, it's worth pursuing and seeing whether that might lead to something. Um, alternatively, you could try to influence your legislature, your parliament. Um, and your, because in many cases, it's the parliament that has uh, created the policy framework which, under which the regulators and then the utilities are obligated to pursue efficiency. Now there are some organizations that um, work internationally to help uh, with that kind of policy development. The, the one I'm particularly familiar with is called the Regulatory Assistance Project based in Montpelier, Vermont. But they have um, very experienced staff, uh, most of whom are former regulators, often very high-level regulators in a number of different states and provinces uh, around the, the world. Um, and they are doing work in India and China and South America and various other locations to help both legislatures and regulators examine their policy options in ways that might lead to a more balanced portfolio of, of programs to address the energy needs of those countries. I worked in Mexico and I was very pleased to see Mexico quickly embrace the idea of co building codes and applying standards. And these required a certain type of efficiency in how you built a, uh, any type of building. And the same thing for appliances. You could not make a refrigerator that used twice the energy than a imported model could have. Uh, this really improved the quality of what people were buying and a lot of these efficiency improvements are uh, invisible to the consumer. So it's important to have policies that ensure that these happen. Um, it also ensures that your industry stays competitive in the international realm. And so the fact that Mexico had standards allowed Mexican refrigerator manufacturers, for example, uh, in 2005 when they had a huge contraction of their internal market, sorry, 1995, they had a huge contraction of their internal market to sell abroad to the US and that made them survive. Had they not had had the, the appliance standards, they probably would not have had product available to sell in the US in 1995 and the two big companies that were making refrigerators in Mexico would have disappeared. If you look at APEC, uh, which is an association of all the countries in the Pacific Rim, they have promoted uh, standards, appliance standards and codes uh, and tried to get them to be similar across countries. So there's a lot of knowledge there that can be tapped into. You can get documents in Spanish so you don't have to recreate them if you're making a standard for Guatemala. It's already written uh, and you can copy it. Uh, other options are having public programs to promote energy efficiency. So if you have a public utility like Mexico does, uh, there was some 
interest within the utility to continue to serve their customers in the best possible manner. And they realized that it didn't mean building more and more power plants, but that you could do energy efficiency promotion. And among the first things they did were compact fluorescent lamp programs. We're talking 1990, 1989 is when they first started. By 1995, they were doing an, a large 2.8 million compact fluorescent lamp program that was as complicated and sophisticated as the best in the U.S. at the time. Um, further down the road, they went into much larger programs where they helped people insulate their homes in northern Mexico, uh, weather strip them, put in efficient lighting, uh, efficient appliances, efficient air conditioners, uh, and help people buy these uh, equipment as well with incentives.